Marco, start us off. You want me to intro? <laughs> Dude, Alessio said Marco's introing. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. He was okay. being facetious. Um, all right. Well, um, <laughs> welcome to the Deep Two. This is a trade deadline special where we're, we're in the room. We're in the podcasting room where this podcast was born. Our first 40 or so episodes were here. Uh, and we thought we'd come back and it's like taking your kids back to your hometown. We're just like, hey, Lucas, Marco, Alessio, all three of you here in person, come hang out where Dante and I used to hang out. Um, and trade deadline is, you know, Dante and I got the days wrong. We actually thought this was going to be the day after the trade deadline, but we've got about 12 hours left. So check your phones if Joe Ingles gets rerouted to third team. Um, but trade deadline stuff. Uh, but first, our friends from Pearl Jam. <laughs> Bugger. That's a good. We should actually put it in there and just like fuck the copyright. Just <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, um, haven't paid for a single sound effect. In interesting this. that uh, interesting that you went with the hometown analogy because I was going to say that this room is like the womb of the podcast. Ooh. Where like <laughs> we're back inside like the the cozy confines of the womb. Uh, where very we, warm, very wet. Yeah. <laughs> what, well, I mean, like everyone, everyone except me has been saying how sweaty they are yeah. being in this room. So <laughs> just like the wound, sweaty, <laughs> sweaty and drinking mythos. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't have spoken. Um, <laughs> well, what's it like, guys? Alessio, what's it like being in the uh, the big boy studio? Yeah, it's good to be back. First episode was here, and then I think every episode after that was on Zoom for me, mm. if I'm not mistaken. Outside of the one four man weave plus Marco recorded at Marco's. What a time that was. Yeah, I know. Good to be back. Um, what a time. First time I've been in the studio with you guys. Uh, sorry, I was five minute late causing the delay. But I, I did used to record on uh, Sin FM with my brother and his mate Rob. Uh, Thirsty Jerks and then Thirsty Jerks Finna Feast. The first season was about juice, <laughs> the second season was about foods. But I feel like I'm much more of an expert in basketball. <laughs> Although I do drink and eat quite often. <laughs> Arguably daily. <laughs> Arguably. <laughs> well, I had I had back in the day on Swinburne Student Radio 2016, Meme Space Radio every Friday from one till two. Uh, yeah, that was that was times. I got a great <laughs> photo from my Instagram of me wearing the headset. Uh, it just absolutely popped off. Got like a hundred likes, which back in the day was big business. Massive. Doing numbers, big brother. business in 2016. And then about three still, weeks. That's still massive. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and then about three weeks later, uh, someone sends me a link to the, the, the media course at Swinburne's homepage and they've got me on the homepage, <laughs> the photo of me on the homepage. I was not at any time a Swinburne student. <laughs> I have no idea how they obtained the photo, but there I was, I doing like a sneaky point, like point to the camera. <laughs> Immortalized. Mr. Holden Jeffrey, how you going? How you feeling with the uh, old SARS-CoV-2? I'm doing great. And look, it's, it's just fantastic to be in the studio with all of you. Sean, you're looking great. Alex, I love what you're doing with your hair. Dante, it's just a wonderful shirt there. Lucas. <laughs> But yeah, just uh, <laughs> dude, why do we like? It, uh, obviously, it's the the phone calling into the studio. But I feel like both Kyle and Jackie O. Like I feel just dirty. <laughs> I'm sweaty. I feel I'm like racist. yeah, racist. I <laughs> uh, just had a beer. Um, yeah, it's this is a fucking putrid feeling. But uh, Marco, all of your jokes are like ten times funnier. Really? <laughs> much like everything with Marco. It's, it's, it's less funny for me. It's, it's, <laughs> much like everything with Marco, it's, it's better when you can't see his face. <laughs> Not only is this a face really? for radio, this is a face for getting called in when all your friends are in the <laughs> studio. <laughs> but but the show must go on, as Lupe Fiasco once said. Um, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> he did say it. He did say it. Um, was that the one that he stole a song? Oh, I don't know. Oh, was no, that, that on lasers? That was, that yeah, was, that was on lasers. Fun uh, fact about lasers. Uh, received such a bad uh, backlash that Lupe Fiasco offered to shoot it with a laser if you, <laughs> if you weren't happy with the record. So Fun fact about, about that. He, he was forced into that record yeah. by his record company because yeah. he wanted to do yes. something good. I was a big blue paste stand back in the day. Massive, and then fucking lasers came in. And then, <laughs> well, then it was like a bit, oof. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was one good song in there. The show goes on, I hear. Nah, nah, nah. So, so, something else. Anyway, it, it really fed into my, like, it was like a bit of a sad, kind of like slower song. Mm. Sad rap, ah. whoa, fed into my emo phase oh. circa 2011. Damn. 
Well, actually, another fun fact oh. about Lupe Fiasco is that he actually um, got copyright striked for Kookaburra Sings on the Old Gum Tree. Yeah, fuck him. Fuck him. Um, for which track? Uh, uh, Down Under by Men at Work. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so anyway, the, sh- the show goes on. Should we talk... Should we talk ball? Should we talk trade? We should talk this, ball. <laughs> this is this is a trade deadline special, uh, and excluding the inevitable blockbuster that's going to happen about four hours after we stop recording, uh, there's, been, there's been a bit of action. There's been a bit of action, uh, probably most notably, and lucky for us with resident Kings fan Aless in the studio, uh, the Indy and Sacramento trade. So I think that's a good place to start. Uh, I will line up the particulars and then, Alas, I feel like you, you should get first stab at this one. <laughs> <laughs> so Indiana has traded uh, DeMontis Sabonis, Jeremy Lamb, Justin Holiday, and a 2027 second, keep your eye on that one, <laughs> to the Kings for Tyrese Halliburton, Buddy Heald, and Tristan Thompson. Alas, the floor is yours. Okay. So I've listened to every Spotify podcast and every, <laughs> I've watched every YouTube video about this trade and when i say consensus i mean consensus we got fucking rorted (laughs) rorted um i appreciate that like kevin o'connor and bill simmons are extremely high on halliburton and then like i've got personal bias from watching him um last year and this year well most of this year until i just gave up on watching it because (laughs) i'm over it um I just, you, I remember when the Bulls traded for Vucevic, I was like, good move, get into the playoffs, win some games, it'll just make the fans feel good. And now that it's happened to my team, I'm like, (laughs) this fucking sucks. What the hell are we doing here? Like, trading, so you've got two point guards, both of which are arguably the same skill level at being a point guard, that is, setting up teammates. Um, except all of the advanced metrics for being a point guard uh, lean in the favor of the guy we just traded away. All of the shooting metrics lean in the gu- in the favor of the guy that we just traded away. He's also a better defender. He's also younger, and he's also on a much better contract. So we've traded all that <coughs> for a elbow operating big man who can't defend, or well, is an average defender. I'm sure he could defend. Does someone have the advanced Mets on uh, Sabonis as a defender? I don't think he's... I haven't checked him in a week. I don't don't think he's the elite of elite on defense. And the best thing about Sabonis is that he's a really good passer. And so he's an elbow elbow operator with three-point shooters zipping around him. And you just... he, He picks out the right pass. What's the second biggest issue with this trade? Your team has two three point shooters. And you've traded both of them for the elbow operator that needs to pass the three-point shooters. So, count me out. (laughs) I'm done. Fuck this. And (laughs) call me a Pacers fan for the next, I don't know how long, because um, I really, really, really can't believe how bad this trade was. For Halliburton to be, like, not tradable for Ben Simmons, but then all of a sudden (laughs) tradable for Sabonis. And I don't personally like Simmons, and I definitely didn't want him on my team. But, like... The, the the theoretical downgrade is unbelievable just to get enough wins to get into maybe the ninth seat because you're not going to get into the eighth or seventh um, and then still lose to the Lakers in the play-in or someone else in the play-in. Um, I, and I don't know what you think is going to happen next year. Probably nothing good. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, whatever. Anyone else? <laughs> I can I I'll play, I'll play devil's advocate here because like yes it's a bad trade you gave up seven years of Tyrus Halliburton for two, at least two years of Demontis Sabonis but you had a log jam right at the guard spot and like that you know the process was really bad you shouldn't have given up Halliburton and like I completely agree and like you've you've kept Fox who's now everyone's like oh well maybe they couldn't trade Fox because he's too bad a contract and he obviously hasn't played that well this year but. If you're going to maximize Darren Fox and your whole thing is Darren Fox can be the best point guard in the whole entire NBA, this trade helps. Then again, so does playing with a good shooting defender in Tyrese Halliburton. But if if everything goes perfect, and if everything goes perfect, you might make the eight seed this year and then the eight seed next year. But if everything goes perfect, 
De'Aaron Fox could be very, very, very good next to like, you know, an elbow operator and Sabonis who can shoot. Like you guys put up 71 points in the first half today. And that's, that's the team that you had. And I was kind of shocked that it was a, it was a, fuck ton of Jeremy Lamb, who I forgot was actually in, in the National Basketball Association, <laughs> <laughs> and 30 points from Harry B, who, who won't be traded, and there's a report in here um, coming from Mark Stein at the Kings of just taking uh, Harry Barnes off off the trading block. But if, if you look at this as a way to maximize um, Darren Fox, who you think is the guy, and I really hope he does it because anything less than the, the one percentile here is just terrible. But do you guys like just get around that and then hope that maybe I'll, I'll look at people other than Alessio, but like, is, is there something there? I think so. I think I'm a bit more positive on the Kings, but I do want to bring our boy Marky Poops in, into the chat. Uh, Marco, what, what are your, what's your read on the Kings paces trade? Well, well I, I disagree with you, Sean, because I think if De'Aaron Fox needs to get rid of Tyrese Halliburton to be good, like, is it worth it? <laughs> Tyrese Halliburton is in in his fit, like a really versatile player. I know he'll be better, like when he's the the focal point uh, franchise. And I even will be in Indiana if they can move on from Brogdon. Like if he's going to be the point guard there. Um, but yeah, if you need to get rid of someone who you know can be the secondary ball handler, who's like got good off ball movement, who's a good three point shooter, just so your point guard can flourish into I don't know what's De'Aaron Fox's ceiling like. Uh, Oh, he should he should be in the All Star team, but so and so is just having like a career <laughs> career year. Um, yeah. And not only not only that, you're putting you're replacing him with uh, a player in Sabonis who like isn't versatile at all. He needs everything to be built around him. You know, like uh, you need uh, you need to surround him with guards who can shoot. And like as Alessio said, you've moved on from those guys. Uh, you need uh, players with good off ball movement. I'm not convinced Aaron Fox has it. Uh, he, he needs to play center, but then like he can't protect the rim, so you need to get someone in to do that. Uh, so I feel like I feel like you know I feel like there's almost no chance the Kings make the play in this year. I know they probably looked quite good today, but against the realistically, Wolves, yeah. I don't see how this makes them get better, considering that they now have two players who just need like a perfectly constructed roster around them. Yeah, I don't think this trade makes them better right now either. And I, I think more importantly, like the fit with Sabonis and Fox, I'm more skeptical about that than anything because Fox's biggest success comes in the open court when he can move around, when the floor is really well spaced in transition and semi-transition. Sabonis is like an unathletic plodding big. And like, you know, unless you talked about how he can be utilized. Um, the only way that they're really going to play together... Um, you know, work together in a two-man game is going to be like a dribble handoff uh, or a pick and roll. But people are just going under Fox pick and rolls because he can't shoot. Um, that's part of the reason why Fox found playing with Halliburton, you know, difficult because Fox can't shoot. So when Halliburton has a ball, what's Fox doing? Um, I don't think that this trade solves the issue there. And I think that like Sabonis is the wrong type of big to pair with Fox. I think that they're not going to necessarily bring the best out of each other. Um, and that being, if that is the case, the fact then that they are also not necessarily going to get better now. I think they're 13th in the West <laughs> as of today with a 20 and 36 record. So like... You third know, from the bottom. Third from the bottom. <laughs> like, what is going on with this with this new play-in era of the NBA when someone who's 16 games below 500 is making like a win-now move to get into the playoffs of this season? Like, that's mm. pretty fucking crazy. But, um, Sean, like, are you still drinking from the fountain of McNair or is this kind of like <laughs> stop the flow? Well, as I said, uh, I've drunk a lot from the, the fountain of McNair and I have a tummy ache. Like, <laughs> this is this is totally not what I expected for a team that, like you say, rebuild and bottom out and they've bottomed out for 16 years or whatever it is. It's like it's a very hard sell, especially when Vivek Ranadive doesn't, doesn't think rationally at all. But... No, I'm not drinking from the fountain of McNair because, like, even if Sabonis is poor man's Jokic and, you know, exactly what you want him to be, you have him for two years and Tyrus Halliburton, I think his ceiling is Drew Holiday and not that much on defense, but Drew Holiday on offense, you know, you're next to Chris Middleton and, and Giannis. That is what you have with Tyrus Halliburton and there's even a little, little bit more upside there. And you've just given away seven years of that guy, like seven years plus, because obviously you can sign him to a five-year deal. 
And if you like it and you're winning, you're just going to re-sign them and have them forever. So, like, even if everything goes right here, you might just lose the guy in two years and you've just given up seven years of your 21-year-old who is also just a great guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. God, he's a great guy. I miss him so much. <laughs> How much of this... Do, now, be honest, and I know you're in the middle of, you know, of uh, the chaos, but do you think this is, like, just normal King's fan depression or is this specific to the stimulus? Yeah, I think... I think he's the most likable guy since De'Aaron, but De'Aaron's become not less likable as a person, but less likable as a player. Mm. Because Ja Morant has taught himself how to shoot in two years, and De'Aaron Fox hasn't in four. And so the more I look at it, the more I'm like, oh, he's just a shit Westbrook. Mm. God damn. Runs really fast <laughs> in a straight line. Uh, loves a missed layup. Loves a missed floater. Loves a missed mid-range jumper. Loves a missed three-point jumper. I'm getting a theme here. <laughs> uh, except Westbrook rebounds, and both of them don't defend. So in a vacuum, can I, shit Westbrook. Can I, can I interject with something? Sorry. I'd like, Darren Fox and Westbrook could both, you know, if they changed the way they played and became these just like speedy, athletic, um, you know, cutters, they would be so much better. But neither of them will do that. Both of them are like stuck in this like point guard mindset when like neither of them can shoot. Yeah, for sure. And I, I want to push back on Sean's... I think Halliburton, I, I, I appreciate that it's a small sample size, but he was 20 and 10 when he ran the team, and that was with shit teammates. And then when he was the secondary ball handler, as you listen to, Marco, um, Jonathan Charks from The Ringer was reeling off some, from, uh, some statistics on Halliburton, and there are four players in the NBA that have less than a 20% usage... 55% effective field goal and a 30% assist percentage. It's Draymond, Chris Paul, Kyle Lowry, and Halliburton. And it's like, oh, who did we trade again? Which one, <laughs> which one did we trade? Um, yeah. Look, you can't, tra- like, the whole thing with you can't trade Fox's contract. Okay. Is that true? Well, though? Like, could, could you okay. not have just done, like, a Fox for Sabonis well, straight up? trade like well, would you so have... like the paces don't take that right mm. because the don't paces... they like, is no. everyone oh, no. so they going... could have gotten hell but they're, for... <laughs> yeah. they're going for the tear down so like we is... don't want we don't want the five year 150 million dollar contract mm. yeah but like like would, would, if you were houston would you trade for fox right now for yeah because i still think fox can be an all-star like you just have to kind of like you know design design the team in a way that's going to accentuate his talents his athletic gifts and also just fucking hope that he learns how to shoot because if he's going to shoot 30% from three, like it's, it's obviously not going to happen for him. Um, but I, I still think of him as a high, high-ish level asset and I'm surprised that maybe, maybe I'm alone in that. Well, I just, I just talked about the best case scenario for him becoming a superstar. I still think that's there, but it's harder to see than it was in his second year. Yeah, I think that's the best case scenario for like every player, though. It's like, oh, this guy, <laughs> le- if, yeah, this guy learns how to like shoot thirty five percent or forty percent from three, then he's going to be good. Halliburton's like literally already doing it, mm-hmm. and he's twenty one, and he's hitting like side step three pointers, and he's mm-hmm. hitting step back three pointers, and he's hitting catch and shoot three pointers. I think he leads the league in pull up threes. Yeah, like so he's already shooting at an elite level at a young age when everyone thought that he wasn't going to be able to shoot a jumper mm. and you get, yeah, I just like, the more you think about it, the more it's like, all right, w- which player is on the court in a seven game final series? Do you think that Halliburton will ever be an all-star? I I think with this, if he had the same amount of minutes and time as Fox, that he's better than Fox. If he just next season, the Pacers trade Brogdon and he starts and he plays 34 minutes a game. Is he an all-star? If he's, well, if he's 21 and 10, is he not? Yeah. Mm. I mean, if you're 21 and 10 and you're on a good team, like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's an all-star. You, so you're 20, not even. So Look you're at 20, Shante and, Murray. But like... Yeah, yeah. but you've got to get the other number in there as well. Mm. What number does his rebound start with? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, i got to be honest. I, I'm, I'm a lot higher than everyone else is, I feel. I think that... Um, <laughs> Just in general? <laughs> yeah, usually. I think that, first of all, the Kings are finally having a punt. Um, Sports bet. <laughs> uh, and... I feel like Halley didn't have this much value until you guys lost him. Like, especially in his rookie season. I think by the end of it, I, but in, in, in the start, like the first half of his rookie season, I was like, sick, Halliburton's pretty cool. And then by the end of it, I was like, all right, he's pretty boring, actually. Um, but I feel like you guys have kind of shut this point down, but I feel like you guys, like people missing, like 
the Kings are getting some bonus in this deal as well. Like, he's really, really good. Mm-hmm. There wouldn't be five centers better than him in the league. And I like, Aless, when you brought up the parallels between the Vooch deal. Um, now, bringing it up, the the young guy that the Bulls gave up was Wendell Carter Jr. You know, arguably Halliburton's better. But, arguably. <laughs> but I think that um, the roadmap that the Bulls t- took, I think that's not unrealistic for the for the Kings to take. And I think over the next 30 games, they could make themselves a pretty um, attractive destination. And also, if they, you know, if they do take the Bulls blueprint and then you get Fox and Fox is the fourth best guy, I think there are other assets on your team where you can make a trade or a sign and trade. And then you get Fox, whoever you the guy you trade for, and Sabonis. And then you can go out and sign DeMar DeRozan, whoever that is this off season. So I think I like this move from the Kings because they're actually doing something. Um, and I've just, I've, I, I see boss, I see Boston as this stink that you don't want to become. And they obviously built from a much, their rise was much better than Sacramento's last 16 years. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> I don't mean that to sound so brutal, but, um, but then they just sat on their hands for so long. And I just think that Sabonis is in the building today and he'll be in the building for the next like 12 years and. I think this is a good move for the Kings. I think if you lose Halliburton, it's bad. But I think that, I think you guys might might you you could make the playoffs next year. I think that's realistic. So I don't like the I don't like the Bulls comparison at all. Sorry, Sean. Um, <laughs> but you know, like Zach Levine was an All Star yeah. last year um, yeah. when they signed Vucevic. Vucevic um, and De'Aaron Fox has so much more of his game to work on than Zach Levine did halfway through last season. Mm. Um, you know what? Zach Levine needed to learn how to be like an okay defender, which he seems to have done. Um, and De'Aaron Fox needs to learn how to... He needs to up that three-point percentage by like seven or eight points, um, which is not, it's not going to happen overnight. And the defense by seven or eight points. And yeah, all, yeah, and, and he's, like, a, he's probably a worse defender than Zach Levine. He definitely Absolutely. is a worse defender. 100 Was he not like a sick defender coming into the league? No, he was just quick and he played for a college that used to beat up shit teams. <laughs> but that's yeah. the thing as well. That's the thing. The crazy thing as well, though, is that like there's no reason why someone who's athletic mm. um, isn't a good and defender. who has good size for the position is not a good defender. Yeah. Like it's literally just concentration and effort. And it's like yeah. there's there's really kind of like no no excuse. And someone someone like Jar is still not a good defender, but. Um, Obviously, he's added, you know, the the three point shot mm. and the finishing inside to his game in a way that Fox hasn't. Mm. So you kind of have to, you know, if you're not going to turn yourself into an absolutely, you know, devastating, efficient offensive weapon, like you, you have to be a good defender. You have to be at least mm. okay. And yeah. and you know, to to Levine's credit, he has kind of developed into someone who's passable and uses his size to get in the way, and you know, does does enough i i go with marco though lucas i don't like the bulls comp at all because mm. because the kings i i just don't think that this trade necessarily makes them better like i'd be shocked if they i mean you, you know never say never because they've only got to get to the 10 seed but like there's no way i don't think this team is making the playoffs next season mm. i'm saying I, i'm saying for the bulls comparison i can see them having four good starters yeah. like a, a better four player rotation than they've had over the last decade um, but but the, the Bulls had Levine, who's better than Darren Fox, and then mm. the guy that they signed in, who's now their best player. Like, how often are you going to find a guy like DeMar DeRozan, who's, whose market had depreciated enough that mm. none of the good teams wanted to sign him, but you were mediocre enough for DeMar DeRozan to come, and for him to have such a gargantuan mm. leap, where he just goes from a guy who's like, does he fit in the NBA, to shooting better than Kobe and Kevin Durant, like, mm. from the mid-range and stuff like that, like... I don't. I didn't trust the Bulls to do that, and I definitely don't trust the Kings to find yeah. that guy. No, you absolutely don't trust the Kings. And also, <laughs> Chicago, <laughs> Chicago is one of the five biggest franchises in the sport. Mm, yeah. True. So of course they signed DeRozan. They're in one of the biggest cities in the country, in one of the biggest markets in the world for like all of sports because Michael Jordan was so famous. So like Lonzo's like, yeah, I'll go play for the Bulls and wear that like red. <laughs> I'll wear that red jersey. And like DeRozan said it as well. Alex Caruso went there, and that's the like that's the bargain being pick up where they're like, all right, we'll take Caruso on. Like he's mm. going to be good. Mm. The Kings aren't signing someone anywhere near what Caruso is. They'll take a punt on Terrence Davis, who is a known abuser, and he still fucking sucks at basketball. So yeah, like yeah. the it, like yeah, the Bulls comparison is like 
big market signs good players because they're a big market, and the Sacramento one is like, yeah, well, they'll, throw, they'll throw money around, California, but... but not that one. Yeah, that's right. The wrong, <laughs> but, city, the wrong city in California. But the playoffs next year, if you look at the standings today, you've got Phoenix, Golden State, Memphis, and Utah. They're going to make it again. How good do you feel? Bloody being hope that so. discussion? <laughs> They're going to make the playoffs Wait, did you next say, year. Did I hear you? I just say Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> you got that's that's that might be your top four again next year. You've got Denver, who's going to get healthy, and the Clippers are going to get healthy. That's six. So that's that's your top six. That's without Dallas. That's without Dallas. All the Lakers. All the Lakers. <laughs> man, you you same argument for me because yeah. that's your top eight. The yeah. Wolves are a year older. Dude, man, <laughs> you can um, finish the pal- it. The Pelicans, Pelicans are going to be there. Five. Damian Lillard's playing. That's eleven teams, and then yeah, and Spurs, whatever. Greg Popovich is still there, but like that's that's the twelfth team, and, and then the, hey, the Spurs. Kings, fuck and, it. <laughs> yeah, and, and maybe and, they can move conferences. Man, Oklahoma is a like. I, I, this Don't is, say that. No, nah, no. Nah, <laughs> they, they, how many you wins? Do like Marco, man. How many wins? How many wins do they have right now? I'm telling you, bro. Next year, Baisley's popping off. Nah, I mean, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying their franchise. What, they got like 12 wins. 17. I'm their, their 17. Fran, their franchise is is too good. Their, the actual franchise itself, like they get too many wins. The, yeah. they, got the, they got the sixth pick last week, last year, last week. They got the sixth pick last year because they won too many games despite the fact they were actively trying to be the worst team in mm. the NBA. They're currently three wins, four wins behind us despite the fact they're trying to be the worst team in the NBA. Like, so who's and to say... trying for the playoffs. Yeah, we're trying for the playoffs. <laughs> so who's to say that... Like, like obviously, they're not going to win more games than us next year. But, you know, if they turn around, they're like, oh, we want to win some games, guarantee you they'll win more games than the Kings. Yeah. Yeah. So that's... But it is... It's really fun to use in 2K, so bonus is good. And I really like the fact that there's a 1% chance that De'Aaron Fox could become really, really good next to a passing big. Mm. Yeah, 1%. I mean, I saw this pass today where Sabonis went up and he slipped the screen and De'Aaron Fox just sort of pushed it between two defenders and then Sabonis caught it on the roll and did a no-look to Justin Holiday. And I'm like, like, I, it's 11th seed, but it's a fun 11th mm. seed. Scale that over 82 games. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of points. Just, and Justin Holiday isn't going to play every game because he can't play in New York or Golden State. Oh, yeah. Wait, so is he... He's got an AP he's, out for him. He is he's like extremely anti-vax. Oh, what about the other holidays? I don't know. Well, uh, he's, yeah, his sister I was wondering about that. Well, they were all super religious, but uh, Drew... Vaccine ambassador, so... Yeah, well, yeah, well, I was, cool. was going to say, Justin's sister-in-law had brain cancer, so I think they're with science. <laughs> she yeah. survived it. Well, uh, but Justin's not. No, but God healed it. Hold on, no. hold on, hold on. We've got Aaron on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Marco. That was um, fucking yeah, you close. Actually, yeah, I, I, I mean, thought he was on Zoom. That's yeah. Marco. <laughs> Mar- <laughs> he looks like a phone right now. <laughs> anyway, it's um, a prop hunt. <laughs> one, one thing one thing that I just want to... It's a YouTube joke. It's <laughs> better. Wait, what's, what's YouTube? I'll show you I'll show you a prop hunt when we have dumplings. Okay, all right. <laughs> one thing that I do want to hit just before we move on to the next big trade is that at long last, the Kings and Buddy Hill have parted ways. <laughs> uh, something that's that's it's been a fait accompli written in the stars for as long as I can remember. Um, turns out Vivek, he wasn't the, uh, the, the second Steph Curry. No, he was the Clay Thompson. There's a <laughs> there's a, a secondary report about this trade from Zach Lowe at ESPN, uh, saying that the Pacers are not going to try and reroute Buddy in a trade either before the deadline or this off season. And my question is, why not? Mm. Why 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 keep why keep him? He gets paid too much money. Like I actually, if if you take away Halliburton and Sabonis, this is a brilliant trade. If you can trade Buddy Hield and Tristan Thompson for Jeremy Lamb and Justin Holiday, two serviceable players for two terrible contracts, mm. um, but that's not. But how Thompson it went. expires at the end of the season. Yeah, yeah, so that doesn't. Yeah, oh, I was just to get off the Buddy deal. Yeah, um, but he gets paid way too much money. But there's always been rumblings that like Team X is interested in the him, but like the Lakers has yeah. been linked to Philly. Like surely there would be something even if it's just salary and two second round picks like mm. just to get off because because what purpose does he serve in indiana mm. like maybe he's just clogging maybe up guard to, minutes maybe they're trying to like recoup his value and they're like okay come here shoot 15 threes a game yeah. maybe well, i've got something. news for you what do you think he's been doing in sacramento yeah, yeah, yeah. for the last four yeah. years but he's, he's changing jerseys <laughs> <laughs> again but he's, he's having i think his worst season shooting wise uh he's shooting about Kill Alexander Walker numbers. We'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I think somehow his value is still there for yeah. a contender or a borderline contender. Like, just the mm. fact that he has that reputation as, like, you know, a uh, knockdown three bar. Even if he's having a bad season, I feel like teams will still want him. Maybe if he gets bored out. Mm. I, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think also a lot has happened in Indiana over, over like, a 24-hour span. And maybe they do just want to see... Like let's keep Buddy for three months and see if it if it for some reason works. Mm. Um, or they're like, all right, Rick Carlisle can can showcase <laughs> Buddy and get him a bunch of open threes over the next thirty games, yeah. Yeah. so we can maybe get another one or two second round picks. Yeah, yeah. yeah Rick I, Car- I like that. Rick Carlisle loves shooting guards. I oh yeah, I don't think that you know. I think Indiana have had a successful season, a successful rebuild over the past yeah. week, and I think that. I, I trust in what they've done. <laughs> like, uh, are Indiana having a moment right now? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, can, I, can, I, can I finish this this whole Kings oh, thing? Oh, I actually have to finish it. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So you go. All right. So the Lakers trade Kuzma, uh, KCP, Montrez, and a first. So yeah, right? uh, which we turned into another first, which turned into Isaiah Todd. Yeah. Okay, for Westbrook, right? What they didn't do was trade for Buddy Heald. If they trade it for Buddy Heald, we still have Halliburton. Butterfly effect. Oh, true. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. So now... Got, and the of, Lakers would have had Heald. Exactly. So <laughs> instead of the Lakers having Heald and being uh, better at basketball, they're now shit at basketball and we don't have Halliburton. So this is actually all Rob Palinka and LeBron James' uh, fault. And that's why I'm out on LeBron as well. And now the Wizards are shit again and yeah. now the Pacers yeah. are shit again. So, so all four teams got yeah. worse. So I'm out on the Kings and I'm out on the Kings. Yeah. <laughs> if, all the, if all the teams, if all the NBA teams just sat down and said, like, look, you should have this player and you should have that player, then they'd all be good and it, everything would be fine. <laughs> yeah. Put yeah. it on the agenda for the off season. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It'll be in the league realignment in one of the 13 jobs. Bullet, bullet in point my one, league. make our team better. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> do you guys remember when there was that leaked screenshot of the King's like room? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the yeah. guys on the wall, and it was like Chandler Parsons. Was, was like Yurt Seven? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's move on to the next big deal. Uh, coming from Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN, it is, of course, Casey Okpala moving to the Oklahoma City Thunder for. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the New Orleans Pelicans have acquired CJ McCollum from Portland. This is part of another team's uh, teardown. So the Pelicans get CJ, Larry Nance, and Tony Snell, while the Trailblazers get Josh Hart, Tomas Sadaransky, Nikhil Alexander-Water, DD Luzada, who I saw in real life, uh, and the Pels' own first if it falls between 5 and 14. Now, Sadaransky and Nikhil Alexander-Walker have been moved on to their own separate teams, which we'll talk about very briefly after this. Um, but <laughs> what do we think here? Uh, Marco, obviously you go for the New Orleans Pelicans. What do you think about bringing a 30-year-old CJ McCollum? Look, I'm, I'm drifting between... Uh, the, our sort of signature cautious optimism and like <laughs> pretty over the moon to be honest. Um, <laughs> I think CJ he fits the mold of the guard we've been looking for. Um, you know he's got good three point shooting. He's as comfortable as a playmaker. He's comfortable off ball as well. Um, and I mean he. You know, despite playing second fiddle to Dame for his entire career, like, he's a really proven guy. If you don't count, uh, you know, his first two seasons where he was playing very sparingly, he averages 22 points on, like, 45-40 shooting. Um, and, I, yeah, it's basically like bringing in another, you know, perennial almost all-star uh, player next to Brandon Ingram and Jonas Valanciunas. Uh, <laughs> I think there are definitely a lot of questions. Uh the age for me isn't a huge issue. Uh, 30, I think, although he's the last two seasons, he's you know had a couple of injuries, he's pre- been pretty durable before that. Uh, when he finishes this contract, he'll be 32, so still technically right in the prime of his career, depending how you look at it. Um, and I think the only other question is really like, our defense is very bad. Uh, it's a little bit better than it was under Stan Van Gundy, but not much at all. And this is definitely like losing Josh Hart in this trade and gaining CJ McCollum in his place is going to make our perimeter uh, shabbier. Um, but apart from that, I'm pretty I'm pretty hopeful. I think I think he's really going to you know provide that backcourt production that we haven't had. And you know, fingers crossed if when however whoever 
whatever, Zion Williamson comes back, I think he's like the perfect guard to sit next to him. I, I I think it's really, really sexy having CJ next to Zion because one of the knocks on CJ is that he's not big enough to guard at the two and he's he's not that great of a creator to be a single your lead guard and he's not that good of a distributor. So put him next to Zion who when he yeah, if when but he does play, he can be point Zion and then you've sort of got a Sabonis and Fox thing going on. <laughs> you can you can hand off a little bit of the playmaking to, to someone else on the court. And same as like, you know, a really good proxy for this is Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic, where Jamal's like not an elite passer, but like he gets away with it because all he does, all he has to do is shoot off the catch when Jokic gives it right where he wants it. That sounded kind of kinky. Yeah, um, it does sound <laughs> very kinky. So this this has the makings of being brilliant uh, next to Zion. It's just where the fuck is Zion? Because actually, funnily enough, he's in Portland rehabbing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love this trade for the Pelicans. I think that uh, CJ Bingers and Zion is a really nice uh, offense, no matter who the coach is and no matter who you're playing against. Um, that's like three, a lineup of three really good three-level scoring. And... Uh, you know, we roasted the the Blazers when they turned CJ into 3J or whatever that dumb fucking joke was. <laughs> but now they got rid of Norman Powell and they got rid of CJ McCollum, and I think that's great for them uh, when they inevitably, inevitably make their rebuild, you know, a bit more attractive in the off-season than they have during this season. That's the Blazers. And then also it'll be fun to watch CJ McCollum when he's not playing mm. with two other players with the exact same skill set in the starting lineup with him. And I'm happy for you, Marco. If I, and I also think this might speed up Zion's recovery, um, <laughs> or like maybe he'll start going to rehab or something. <laughs> um, and you got Larry Nance Jr. I'm I'm sure he would have had a, a plummet in uh, output uh, in Portland. To be completely honest, I happily didn't watch any Portland games this year. <laughs> Um, who is going to be a great uh, whatever he is uh, um, with him. He's actually, it came out a couple of hours ago that he's going to have surgery and be out for six weeks. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> he can go to rehab with Zion. Yeah. <laughs> well, they actually, they tried to make Zion go to rehab, but he said no four times. <laughs> One more than Katy Perry did. <laughs> thanks, Katie Perry. thanks, Marco, for laughing Amy at that. Amy Winehouse. <laughs> Damn. Um, I, I didn't even get the reference. They, they tried, tried to, to make, make me go, go to rehab and I said, you know, yeah. Uncultured. Sorry. I was going to sing along, but I knew that an enormous lag would fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> but you're in person, Marco. It's okay. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm here, Marco. <laughs> one of those weekends, huh? I th yeah. Um, <laughs> you're telling me. I think that Larry Nance is a great, uh, a great little like, addition to his trade because he he has real value, and I think that. Uh, Zion at the five and Larry Nance at the four is like interesting. Like mm. I would like to see how that looks. Mm. And then I think in terms of assessing this trade from a value perspective, um, a, the the first has the potential to be like a really, really good pick. Uh, it very well could be like five or six in this year's draft. But for most draft analysts that I've been saying, apparently this year's only got like three or four really kind of high level players and then it absolutely plummets after that. Is and Chet rest... Holgram one of them? Yeah. yeah. Not buying it, man. Not fucking <laughs> Wait, buying it. You're not, it. Buying, the, I got you're not the... buying the seven foot two, 150 <laughs> pound guy. The James Wiseman <laughs> yeah, but crossover. Yeah, Big Jim. Yeah, his name's fucking Chet and he looks like a toothpick. Yeah, he <laughs> actually looks like a toothpick. It's, it's, it's too yeah. crazy. So yeah, if, there was a, if there's going to be a year where you want to like surrender a potentially extremely mm. valuable first round pick this is probably the year mm. um before you go into 2023 where there's like some um you know there's that g league and, game coming in 2023 yeah. <laughs> and now um dante to the grand buffer <laughs> Mar Marant, um, Jr. Since, since we drafted um zion our first round draft picks have been jackson hayes Nikhil alexander walker um Kyra lewis jr and trey murphy uh, look, I'll never, I'll never turn around on Jackson Hayes, even if he's having a hundred nine and nine games. Uh, Nikel Alexander Walker, obviously, we've just fucked him up. Um, Kira Lewis Jr. has oh, been solid yeah. but injured, and Trey Murphy is he's got averaging like four points a game or something, and he looks tragic every time he's on the court. <laughs> who's so the who's I'm the thinking, bloke who you should have taken instead of Trey Murphy? Williams. Yeah. Looks very comfortable guarding perimeter players. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. some fucking analysis. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Trey Murphy's four points. Shoot me. <laughs> Gun to Cat's head. But I just don't. I just don't trust this. Even if this was a good draft, to draft someone good in that position. Um, and 
you know, is that who we need? Like another another twenty something year old on the team? Probably not. Your last two good draft picks were the two unanimous first overall picks. <laughs> Davis and Zion Williamson. So, yeah. I want three good draft picks, thank you. Who else? No, the, Chris Paul. Chris Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, well you, you drafted DeAndre Hunter, which would have been a really good um, mix next to Zion, but obviously you traded that away. Would it have been? Did they, did they draft him? I thought the Hawks drafted him with the pick. <laughs> I think yeah, but, but he, put, he put the hat on. Yeah, oh, okay. they, they drafted him with the pick and then traded him to the Hawks. Because um, the trade doesn't get processed or after the draft. Yeah, but it was the is, Hawks, like the Hawks. Yeah, they drafted him before the Hawks. Um, DeAndre Hunter's played like approximately eleven games in three seasons. Oh, yeah. so, he's looking he's, he's hey, unbelievable. Hey, in all I do it better than Westbrook. I had. <laughs> you know how comfortable he is on the perimeter. Yeah, he's comfortable going from the players. I I drafted him in fantasy this year, so I'm wary. I spent like a, my fourth pick on DeAndre Hunter. Yeah. So, well, so the, the Hawks. The Hawks, tra- the, Hawks traded reddish, <laughs> the Hawks traded reddish for him. So interesting. Huh? Yeah. They got rid of Reddish for Hunter, so they could like. Can I just say we all pause and do a big cough? Because okay. I was about to die, oh. so I'll cut it out. So no, this is perfect. Get rolling. Keep... <laughs> so I'm I'm also really happy with the Pelican side of this. I think like, yeah, take a shooting guy that can't really pass and put him next to the big man that can pass. The big man being Zion, big being fat, not tall. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's move. Like, I want to. I, I love the Blazers side of this. Oh wait! Before we move on to okay, that, okay. Um, the last thing on the Pelican side is I have to give a one percent apology to David Griffin because this trade is actually consummated in two deals. Uh, the first one was fitting into the trade exception which they gained for giving away Devonte Graham for Lonzo Ball. Um, I thought they were going to get Kyle Larry. I don't know what happened. Um, but <laughs> the only reason this trade happened. <laughs> the only reason this trade happens is because they opened, they used that trade exception to bring in, I think it was um, Larry Nance and Tony Snell and then the CJ was somehow done elsewhere. I, I don't know the particulars, but I know that they needed to use that trade exception. So instead of losing Lonzo for nothing, they lose Lonzo to get Devontae Graham and Larry Nance. When you said at the start of that little spiel, you said consummate. I thought it was going to be a little bit sexier than what Linda was saying. Oh. He said Consomme, and then he said David Griffin, and we all just turned off. <laughs> Consomme is that soup. Mm. You, know, you know that's just stock that's just... You know this. Yeah. You know that's just stock that's just been strained? I'm the chef. You know, know that's just stock <laughs> that's just been strained? Wait, what is? Consomme. What's that? Chicken stock. It's stock that's been strained. <laughs> Cons- Consomme is a French soup game. where you, you'll just have a stock, and you just get I'm not really it. interested in French soups. Well, when we did Bidia, uh, that's also consomme that you cook the goat meat in and then. Oh, I'm interested in that. And then dip mm. it. And yeah, then that was dunk, dunk the taco listen. in. And then, <laughs> yeah. dunk, and then you take the consomme, put it in a little bowl, and then you re dunk the taco after cooking it. And then also you beat consomme, Jackson in FIFA. But not the same <laughs> as French consomme. For Lucas, did you know Jackson was system. ranked 14th in the world? I don't no, buy 150th. It. <laughs> I don't buy that at all. My mate Johnny would spank him. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd beat him in FIFA. But Alex, you wanted to, <laughs> you wanted to start on the Portland side of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got the positive and the negative of the Portland side. The negative is um, they've gone to Damian Lillard and they've said, supposedly, they said, we're going to retool and rebuild around you if you're willing to stay. And he's like, absolutely, I'm willing to stay. Let's do it. So they've traded Norman Powell for no good players and Covington for no good players after giving up Gary Trent, a good player, and then two first-round picks, you know, what could have become good players, but they didn't. Um, Then they did this trade where they get Josh Hart, who's good, um, and then Sadoransky and Alexander Walker are both gone. That first round pick could be good, right? But here's the thing. Lillard needs a good team in the next... Let's give him three seasons just... Oh, let's be cons- six months, man. Yeah, yeah but let's, be, let's, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Three seasons, if not two. Um, they need to be good right now with zero players on their roster that are good at basketball. Nurkic is washed. Simons is, I would argue, overrated, but whatever um and and simon's probably tops out as mccollum let's say Mm. um they're not going to draft someone at pick six that is going to immediately be the second best player on the trailblazers and even if they do they don't have a third fourth and fifth player Uh, let's call Nurkic the fifth so that's the downside the plus side is and trigger warning here let me let me switch wait, up wait, my notes. Trigger for what? I, sh- I need to be prepared. <laughs> no, just timestamp it. You, you'll get it. So, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna play devil's advocate and argue that. Oh, oh no! Oh, it. If it has to go, if it has to go. I get it. Totally get it. No, that, that's that's tasteless. <laughs> well, well, that is tasteless. Another Chauncey Billups take is that they 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 got him in because they knew he was a bad coach and they knew they wanted to lose games to yeah, get a higher fair pick. Point, so fair now point. they've got a bad. There's coach. the actual problem. <laughs> so let's just wipe that out. Of the Make make that joke like Nikhil Alexander Walker and get him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, I have to go. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Um, but yeah, I mean, devil's advocate is you've got Josh Hart who looks nice next to him. You've opened up, and as um, who's the new to Cronin? Uh, yeah, Joey C. Joey C. Um, Joey C. Said that by trading away Norman Powell, they've they've cleared the quote runway unquote to re-sign Anthony Simons, and and that if he is a CJ guy, they won't run into any problems with him and Dame on defense. <laughs> so you're going to re-sign Simons. You've got Josh Hart, who's a good player. Nurkic has played better in the past fortnight. And then after all is said and done, you've got about $15, $16 million in cap space and you've got that sixth pick. Maybe you trade that sixth pick and if you get New Orleans pick, you bundle them together and trade for like a, a prime Trevor Ariza type. Is that, <laughs> is that being... Is that being about maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe they can trade for like a... Robert Cupping. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then you use that $16 million to sign like... A good player. That's so many moving parts, and <laughs> even if that all went well, next season, if if they're halfway through next season and they're like twenty and thirty, then Dame just requests a trade, mm. and you feel like an, an idiot for trading the sixth overall mm. pick for a veteran. They've they've also let the interim GM do the tear down. So if this guy doesn't get hired. <laughs> Yeah, like, he's got to get hired that's, though. Because well, well, apparently, 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 the teardown is an audition for his job. That's that's what they said. So if why you, would if, you let someone audition with a teardown? It's such an important thing to like. <laughs> I mean, I think I think he's done a fine job. Mm. It's just what's he going to do to rebuild up the hard part? He well, definitely could have gotten more for Powell. There's no way he couldn't get a first for Powell. No, well, well see, they, got they, they got Keon Johnson yeah. in that trade, who I who was the Clippers' was first round pick like, last season, okay. like last off season. But mm-hmm. it's worth saying that the Clippers drafted. I think they had two picks. They drafted Keon Johnson. They drafted Brandon Boston in the second round, and they drafted Amir Coffey, maybe, or they maybe he was undrafted. Anyway, Keon Johnson was taken like twentieth, and the others were second round or undrafted, and both of them are playing more than Keon Johnson. Like, he wasn't even in the rotation. Uh, so. Keon, Keon Johnson's shooting, like, 30% in the G League. 27% yeah. from three. So, he's, like, <laughs> technically, he's, like, first-round value, but realistically, no. The thing that then I, I worry about as well is, is there a chance that in trading away CJ and Norman Powell, you've traded away better players than Anthony Simons and what's it going to cost to re-sign Simons? Because he's having a really good season. But I worry that you're going to sign him to definitely a richer contract than what Powell was on, which is on like five years, five years, 90 million. Probably not as much as, as CJ, but maybe like somewhere like low 20s. It's a lot of money for someone who's only proven it over half a season. And he's proven it when Dane's been out of the lineup, when he's been the lead ball handler. So what happens when you bring your ball-dominant guard, who's been pretty average his entire career until he got the reins to the, you know, run the show? What happens when you bring him back next to healthy Dane? Like, is he just going to be marginalised again like he was for the, the first three years of his career? Except now you're not paying him $2 million a year, you're paying him 23 Like, yeah, I just... If, if you're Detroit, throw the bag at him and just wait for Paul and to blink. <laughs> yeah, or you just say we'll trade you Killian Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> I think Anthony can be better than CJ McCollum is. Um, I, <clears throat> I, 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 the the Blazers are obviously a fucking house on fire, and the only thing they've really done poorly is get Eric Bledsoe. But I, I know I feel like they can move on from him. Is there not a limit to the amount of players you can have on a roster as well? Because it seems like they're getting at least one, usually two more players back uh, in they, these they deals. They waived a couple of guys. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. That's that's good to know. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'm. I mean, if you look at all these trades in a vacuum, the Blazers lose all of them by so much. But you know, holistically, and where they're trying to go, they're you know making the only move they mo- moves they really can. Did you guys want to know the headlines that the ABC and that Fox Sports used for Joe Ingles trades? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, can we? Can I say one more thing before we Course, say that? It's a freaking basket. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a report from Henry Abbott of True Hoop today that said that um, 
Damien Lillard, he thinks that he wants to request a trade, but both Dame or nor the organization want to be the first one to make the move because they the other one would look bad in doing so. So Dame can say, oh, I wanted to spend my whole career there, but they traded me. Or they could be like, Dame wanted so much, but he wanted to leave. So. This is the exact plot line from season four of Peep Show. <laughs> Where Mark, Mark, Mark doesn't want to marry Sophie, but he doesn't want to tell her that he doesn't want to marry her. And Sophie obviously doesn't want to marry Mark, but she just wants to get married. And neither of them says anything. Uh, do, they, wow. do they get married in the end? Uh, I actually can't remember. It's, it's my second my second watch through, but I can't remember what happens. Uh, but it's true that life They're imitates They're definitely art. not together by season six or whatever. Spoilers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then, yeah, Mark, then Mark starts stalking that girl that he met at the shoe store. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right, right itself. We've all done that. <laughs> that's so Mark. <laughs> Are these fucking oh. people real? Like, what? Who Pink cares? Shirt. Who cares? No, no, no. Back to the Damien Lillard oh. Portland Trailblazers. <laughs> no one wants to move first. Who gives a flying fuck? The the best careers in last for sixteen years. <laughs> you want to play this like, um, hard, <laughs> this hard to get for four of them and just waste a quarter yeah, of your career? Right, so or, dumb. Or like on Portland's side, trade him because he's not going to be worth any more than he was a year ago. But you didn't mm. fucking trade him. Mm. But who? What fans are going to be like? I can't believe Joe Cronin traded away a 31-year-old when our whole entire core is 20. That is disgusting. A 31-year-old that we were going to sign to a two-year $120 million extension. They're literally, they're literally less than 500 since they made the conference finals. So, <laughs> But that city, lo- that city loves it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, read us the headlines for the Joe Ingles trade. Yeah. I also have Joe Ingles trade headline uh, <laughs> content, so I'm going to latch on after you. So we got... 10 hours ago from the ABC, uh, Joe Ingles reportedly traded to Portland Trailblazers by Utah Jazz before NBA trade deadline. And then seven hours ago from Fox Sports, quote, today hurts, end quote, colon. Joe Ingles responds as NBA world stunned by, quote, cold-blooded, end quote, trade. (laughs) Oh, my God. Despite the fact that for the last, sorry, Dante, despite the fact for the last two weeks, everyone in the NBA sphere or cognoscenti, um, <laughs> has been saying like oh they're gonna put Ingles in a deal with a first mm. everyone everyone <laughs> in the NBA is like Ingles getting traded Ingles, with or without a first that's Ingles it. literally gave an interview like what a few days ago being yeah. like oh no I completely understand if they trade <laughs> dude uh, <laughs> hey, hey Marco we've got the quote here I'll actually just read it out to you uh, Joe oh. Ingles said quote if I'm able to get someone back that would help me would help them the team Utah Jazz make a push for the end of the year I understand that. I'm not going to sit here and be sour and upset. So now we sound upset. Now, now. They try, they try <laughs> we go work. through the particulars of the trade and see if they uh, got someone back who would help them make a push for the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> and then tell me if he's sour and upset. <laughs> Actually, that that could be a reason why Joe Ingles is sour because his, his former team doesn't get better. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what are your headlines? And we'll talk about the trade. I don't, I don't have headlines, but I've got vibes, which is very much similar to, to the second one that Lucas read out. But it was from like like even less reputable sources than Fox Sports Australia, which is hard to believe, I know, but they do exist. And instead of it being cold-blooded, it was like NBA star devastated after savage trade. (laughs) I've just Googled Joe Ingalls trade, and obviously we're in Australia, so I'm getting all the fucking Aussie ones. (laughs) News.com.au. Wife devastated as the <laughs> NBA star cut loose. <laughs> also, none of these fucking people are reporting what the trade was. All we know is that Joe Ingles is unhappy. <laughs> when I saw this trade, my first thought was, I wonder how Joe Ingles' wife feels. <laughs> yeah. She's devastated. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, actually, to be fair, uh, after the Portland trade, I was like, how's CJ's wife? Yeah, because you got yeah, a weird, like you got yeah. a weird thing for CJ's wife. Well, she does too. Is it the Anne I don't, Hathaway no, thing? No, I don't. <laughs> yes, Anne Hathaway thing. Um, yeah, well, now she has to go live in New Orleans instead of Portland. It's not that bad. Yeah, it's not that much of a down. They got good Joe Ingles' wife. No, no. Oh, right, right. right. Oh, that's the particular is the Joe Ingles' wife's trade. <laughs> <laughs> no, Joe Ingles' wife gets <laughs> to upgrade Ingles... from Utah to Portland, somewhere else. Yeah, Joe Ingles' wife. <laughs> Anywhere so, else. Who did Joe Ingles' wife's husband get traded for? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Joe Ingles' wife's husband got traded for Kemba Walker's cousin, Nikhil Alexander Walker. <laughs> Wait, you tell me that, uh, is that. Is that true? Yeah. So the, Alex- so the Alexander is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is like. Shade. SGA. Yeah. And the Walker is Kemba. Yeah, and yeah. then. No, it's M- Marco, did you say Cliff Alexander is the dad? <laughs> nah, 
that was a joke. Ah, oh. <laughs> far out though. That's pretty hectic. Like yeah, keep it in the keep it in the family. I, okay. the basketball you, pedigree is it's either Shay or Kemba actually. I well, the Alexander, well, the Alexander is, is definitely Shay. It's not going to be the Gilgeous and the Walker. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um, the Shay. It's, the, it's Shay. the Shay. Okay, so yeah. it's not Ken Walker. You... We've also got um, we've also got Billy Hernan Gomez's brother, Wancho. Yeah. Um, Tomas Sadaransky. <laughs> Where did he get rerouted to? San Antonio. Oh, I'm actually reading Good particulars fit. here. I'm Good not fit. trying to fucking make jokes. <laughs> um, and Portland get Joe Ingles, Elijah Hughes, and a 2022 second from Memphis, which we're actually going to see soon, as opposed to that 2027 one that you mentioned before. But Dante, thanks for mentioning that 2027 second at the start of the pod, because that was rerouted to San Antonio. Wow, it's it's crazy how things come full circle. 2027, 2027, fuck it. It's going to look great in San Antonio. Oh, yeah, big time. Um, and like, honestly, Tomas Sadaransky's probably been the worst rotation player for the last three years. I, he had that one season, but... But I tell reckon... You what, if, eight, if, four, and four. If nah, he's going to go anywhere... That nah, was a good eight, four, and four, though. If he's going to go anywhere and have another eight, four, and four, it'll be San Antonio. For sure. Mm. For sure. Is Derek White now obsolete in San Antonio? <laughs> yeah. Devastated. Um, so, white, white man with big contract. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's let's talk about Joe Ingles. Um, obviously, Renee's husband. Oh, someone's <laughs> been on the Googles, huh? Um... So, what do you guys reckon he does in the offseason? Does he sign a minimum somewhere, make good deal? Does he re-sign with Portland for a little bit more than the minimum? What do you think? Surely he just re-signs with Utah. Yeah. He's yeah, definitely worth more than the minimum as well. But ACL, man. Yeah, just someone, give him, give, some, give 30, him, a, give 30, him, a, someone, someone will give him more than give him one, ten million over two years. Are you serious? Yeah. So yeah, that's Absolutely. Tory. That's Tory Craig. Bro, mate. he's so good though. Joe Ingles is so yeah, fucking yeah. good. Yeah, but yeah. he just tore his ACL and he's like thirty five. Yeah, but everyone that came back all who, year as well. Who was the last guy that came back from an ACL tear that was like not good? Like I feel like everyone now is coming back from ACL tears and they're just like Let's not discount Paul Zingus. Well, he's seven three though. <laughs> yeah, big yeah, and he's weird. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's also well, he's off. Yeah, he's also an offender. So. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, pulling out. Yeah, but oh, but but like you're talking about the high profile players, the low profile players who tear their ACL and never work another day in their life. Okay, yeah. But we're talking about Joe Ingles. Okay, fair he's point. He's 34 <laughs> and famously unathletic. I don't think like if anyone's gonna not come back from an ACL very well, it's gonna be him. Well, but to, but he then Devil's, to come back to being Devil's advocate to that point though, if he was never athletic to begin with, yeah. does it matter that he's no longer athletic? <laughs> he was already yeah, playing yeah, yeah, like yeah. he didn't have an ACL. <laughs> exactly. He's a better playmaker than CJ McCollum and you're gonna be paying him thirty million dollars a year. So. Yeah, I never seen CJ lock well, up Paul George in the playoffs. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Our books are looking pretty light. We could sign him to a minimum, I guess. For if, sure. if we had to. Well, For everyone's sure. books are light if it's a minimum because they don't count against the cap. Jeez, you got a fucking stat head over here. Do they actually? Do By they not hell. count? Yeah. Oh, wow. Fun fact. Um, I I am much more lower on him than everyone else, and I picked him for sixth man of the year last year. I just think you should pay him more than $2 million. That's all. Wow. Yeah. Well, he, as, well, to be fair, as, as a veteran, his minimum would be probably yeah, more 2. like 6. four. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. I thought it was um, two. I thought it was two point six. No, it's calculated by, by years of service. So the longer, the, the older that you are, basically. Um, oh, so instead of four, you're paying five. But I think you could easily. I think if you if you gave him five over, you know, five a season over two years, and you only get eighteen months, you know, a season and a half of that, I think that's still value. You. Think you, about how many shit players get paid five million dollars a year. Damn insurance. Would you would you bet a picnic on it that he gets more than the minimum? Nah, but be, I'll uh, I'll bet you some pico organic mint chocolate. That's though. right. Yeah. Oh All right. God, the milk bar's gonna be out of that stuff. Yeah, hey, <laughs> bad day, bad day to be Melville Road Food Works. I'll tell you that much. Goodness. Um, uh, Marco, um, Marco, are you are you sad to see Nicole Alexander Walker leave? You sad? Oh, I, I couldn't be happier, mate. I couldn't be happier. <laughs> Marco's actually calling uh, in because he's driving him to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> I'm carrying him. I'm carrying him to Utah. Um, does anybody think that um, Nikel Alexander Walker or Wancho Hernan Gomez are actually going to make Utah better? Like, genuine yeah. question. Isn't Wancho in the San Antonio's? That's the other one. They, yeah, they just traded him they, to Utah. Yeah. Oh, oh, they traded him to Utah. <laughs> yeah. I think Wancho could. I. Dude, I I'm, I hate to to bang, beat on a dead banger, <laughs> but Nikhil Alexander Walker's field goal percentage starts with a three, and it's not cl- that close to a four. Yeah, uh, I don't think he makes. 
I don't think he, I don't know. I don't, he's, he's such a not, he's such a weird fit in Utah. It's like, he, ah, this is, nah, he's, he's, I, don't, I don't get him, but one try I think can make a difference. Marco is, how, I feel like the thing that Utah needs arguably more than anything is like a, a guard or wing size player who can actually defend anyone. Um, I, I, much like Lucas admitting he hasn't been watching much Portland, I haven't been watching much New Orleans this year. Is Nick Alexander Walker actually like okay defensively or is he a bit of a turnstile? No, he's not. He's not even okay. Like yeah. he's six foot six and he's got long arms, but he just loses, he gets his back to his man just out constantly, constantly, constantly. And he's just, he's one of those players who just always looks like he's thinking about offense when he's on defense. Like, he's just thinking about the next shot he's going to take. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just completely disengaged, can't stay in front of his man, um, doesn't even, you know, doesn't even get nifty steals like some of those long arm freaks do. Um, and I'd just like to say, like, he's, he had like a 25% usage rate in New Orleans on 37.5% shooting. And it's like, you can't be, you can't be taking almost 13 shots a game when you're shooting like that. It's just it's just absolutely unconscionable. So I don't see the fit for Utah on, like, he's an offensive player and he's not very good offensively, so I don't think he's going to fill that defensive hole at all. Um, he'll get outplayed by Trent Forrest. <clears throat> I've just I've just gone to Wancho Hernan Gomez alley on basketball reference. He's averaging 1, 2, and 0 on 20, 14, and 69. Well, uh, pre <laughs> That, that's that's worse than Nikhail Alexander Walker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You say twenty? His splits are twenty, fourteen, and dude, <laughs> <laughs> nice. What one show? One, one show was bad in his last year in Denver. Um, and I remember there was one year where people used to rock up to games in ponchos because when they were behind the rim, because he would splash them, they would be wearing one show ponchos. I was like, oh, we've got something here, and then Minnesota traded for him, and he shat the bed, and then they extended him. Um, and then that extension is, I think he's still in it right now and he's been traded three, four times. Yeah. Mm. Are we, this is more just a general comment. It's got nothing to do with Wancho. Sorry to move on from the Wancho chatter to all the fans Please. out there. Um, I just like, One hour. are we, are we a little like, <laughs> so, so subtle. <laughs> are we a little like just, I, I feel like we come through off seasons and through trade deadlines where I'm like, I can't believe how many shit people there are running NBA teams mm. like Utah you need one player that player has to be able to defend people that are six foot eight that's it sign trade for him yeah sign him whatever didn't do it everything the Lakers have done put that in another thing <laughs> I don't particularly like this Portland tear down not because the not because they shouldn't be tearing down but because they're tearing down to all of a sudden miraculously put a team around Lillard, hmm. apparently. Now, if they now trade Lillard, okay, whatever, fair enough. But until then, we're under the assumption that you're tearing down for Lillard. Like, that's ridiculous. The Kings deal, stupidity. I've just listed, what, five teams out of 30 that have just made deals in the last 10 hours. <laughs> that's not to mention all the other shit GMs there are. Just makes you think, get us in a bloody, get, get us in the building and watch oh. us go to work. It, like, you know, I'm sure it's like an impossibly hard job. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you just look at them and you're like, you, you can't be serious. I'll tell you what Utah should have done. Rescue Tory Craig from wherever the yeah. hell he is. <laughs> oh my God. The one, he got $10 million. You couldn't have beat him $10 he's, million. Yeah, he's five, yeah, he's, he's five million a year and he can defend threes, fours and fives. He can play small ball five or you put him at the four next to go there. And then, no. mate, I'll see, you in, I'll see you in the conference finals. Yeah, they literally. Gave, they gave that to Rudy Gay for the exact same reason. It just hasn't worked. Yeah, he's, and he's been terrible. They gave it to the other Rudy G as well, but we don't talk about that anymore. <laughs> well, does, does, Ingles, does Ingles in a first get you... Not that, not that you want to give up a first for Tory Craig, but like... I think the next first they can trade is 2027 or something. Yeah, but like if you're Indiana... Joe, oh, no, no, Joe no, no. I'm saying in... Utah don't want to give up that far ahead. Oh, okay, yeah. Because sure. who knows? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, is, is Tory, Tory Craig still in Indiana? Or yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's... Yeah. He's, um... Not really playing much, is he? <laughs> <laughs> so, surely you trade Joe Ingles in a second and you could get him. Yeah. Although, maybe now that Indy's traded all of their wing-sized players, now is Tory Craig's Keep moment to shine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, how tall is Duarte? He's not 6'6". Six, six. He's like 6'7". Six, is he good anymore? Oh, he is 6'7". Yeah, he's yeah. still good. Still good? I got him on a fantasy team. <laughs> so he's 6'7". He's Hallie's, like, Hallie's like 6'5", like... 6'6", six, 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 and Heald's 6'4". Yeah. So he could theoretically... But Heald's a little 6'4". He and he's not a good defender. And six, he's four. an old 28. <laughs> <laughs> 29. <laughs> um, 29's the new 24. Can I sit for three-point shooters? <laughs> What's the deal with Jeremy Lamb getting added to all these deals? I see now he's been traded for the fourth time in his career. Is he not just really good? Like, I feel like he's really good. He's a handy role player. When you say really, do you mean yeah. like yeah. totally average? <laughs> no, I mean, like, you know, in the context of role players. I like right. him. So he's good off the bench. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Like, fair, fair. Like, he's, yeah. he's worse than these, campaign. Seventh, all these like, no, 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 Jeremy Lin. Seventh, seventh man? <laughs> the wrong Jeremy L. Yeah, yeah, seventh man. In the context of seventh players, <laughs> Jeremy Lamb's made some noise in his time. Okay. He hit that game winner from yeah. like 500 yeah. feet. Is yeah. that is that repeatable? <laughs> yeah, he called bank. Oh, Just yeah. Shoot, he called shooting luck. I thought he called game. Shooting luck. Um, I don't know about Jeremy Lamb, but he's going to get the opportunity to show it because he's the starting shooting guard, is he? Uh. Well, they've been playing a lot of Terrence Davis, so honestly, who fucking knows? And who, and who fucking they? Cares? You should say we, man. No, you're, no, you're part no, of no. the, the I purple said one. <laughs> I very pointedly said they. Um, so, trade deadline's not done. Do we think that there's going to be a Harden deal or a Westbrook deal? Harden deal, I reckon, is you can you can book it. That you shit's happening it. for sure. You reckon? Yeah. Yeah, I reckon um, with Harden, we've noticed, we've, we've seen there's, where there's smoke, there's fire. And yeah. I hate to use that cliche. Well, he's doing the hamstring tightness mm. thing now. Where he's, he's missed four games because his hamstrings all of a sudden hurt. And now all the reports coming out are like, Harden is screaming at the Nets front office, get me the F out of here. And mm. then the Nets said today that they're happy to treat him like Kawhi Leonard and just say, win us the title, then you can leave. And just say, deal with it. Yeah. Um, did, you, did you guys want to talk about that? Or should we all just say a deal we want to see as soon as this podcast finishes? And um, get some dumplings. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to these dumplings now. Yeah, right. It closes at nine, so. <laughs> no, we'll punch him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if there's one thing this fucking guarantee, <laughs> so we're gonna punch these dumplings. Like All right, well this. let's let's go around the horn uh, <laughs> and say we'll say the particulars for a trade that we think is gonna happen. Uh, I want I want wall. For Westbrook and a first, I mm. want it. Like I really. That want is it. like Chaotic. the dirtiest trade. Oh, the dirtiest yeah. trade. oh yeah. I hate it. I hate it. I don't like it. I just really. Yeah, want it. I agree. Um, and I want Harden for Simmons. Oh and my God, you're taking all the trades. Yeah, I well, was... there's only two trades. There's only two trades. Oh, Jeremy Grant. No, I don't for care. Jeremy I don't Lane. care about Jeremy Grant at all, honestly. Um, <laughs> yeah, it'll be it'll be Simmons and. Maxi instead of Tybal. I want the 76 to keep Tybal. What yeah. about if the Kings trade for Jeremy Grant? <clears throat> what about it? Okay. Well, are you into that? No. Davion Mitchell and Nothing. stuff? They could do anything. <laughs> they could trade for LeBron and I'd still be like, don't care. Wow, dude. Yeah, I'm out. I'm so... Fucking hell. Barnes, Davion Mitchell, two firsts for Jeremy Grant. One first. Yeah, it's a, I, think that's <laughs> a, I think that's a fine piece of... Yo, uh, that's so hate, bro. <laughs> a, I think that's a fine piece of work from Monty McNair. If you... Oh. Um, I'll use my Phoenix Suns membership to give you like a two-week free trial of being a Suns fan. If you oh, want. I'm in. You can sign up. Yeah, literally. So oh. in. Phoenix, Miami. Miami's always fun. Mm -hmm. um, or just the league. You yeah. Know? I'll, do a Chris, I'll do a Chris Wessling and I'll just... You take a step back and you just sort of like watch the whole... Go Bengals. For, yeah. Follow players. Yeah. Fox. Well, follow no. the Warriors. Halibut. Now, following players is... I... I I hesitate to follow players because you realise that most of them are fucking idiots. Yeah, that's, well, that's the thing about Halliburton, though, because he's fucking not. That's yeah. The, that's the thing, he's not. That's the, so. the, that's the problem with, with athletic endeavours, is that we ascribe values to these people who most of the time don't meet the value system. Oh, that we, that's so facts. Seriously, yeah. I bought my nonno a Collingwood Magpies calendar for the year. Uh, he's a Collingwood Metal Price fan, in case anyone was wondering. And Jordan Degoe is the month of August. Wait, yeah. even 22. Uh, even oh after. Oh yeah. August, is, no. August yeah. is cancelled. No, he bought it. Yeah. He bought it in 2019. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they, so the, the whole Degoe thing happened, and they were like, you know what? Let's put him on the calendar. Yeah, well, he's kind of, he's literally like training with the team again. So. Oh, yeah. Really? No, no, um, yeah. Yeah, but it's so easy not to put him on one of the 12 months of the year. Like, you have what? <laughs> There's a players. thousand fucking <laughs> players on yeah. a footy team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just put Caleb Poulter on there twice. Uh, give, give, yeah, give Darcy Moore two months or something. Yeah. 
Just oh. do like a scenic shot of a magpie in a field or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, other people's traits? Yeah, Marco, what's yours? Um, you guys cut out for a bit there, but I'm saying like a trait <laughs> I'd like to see happen before the deadline. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd still like to see Miles Turner go to sh- the Charlotte Hornets. I don't, mm. I don't think it'll happen, but I think that would just make the Hornets like such a, such a complete team. Yeah, absolutely. Lucas? Oh, my mythos is boiling hot. I have neglected <laughs> it for about the last hour. Uh, can I go last? Sure. I don't have a trade, but I have a, uh, I have a, uh, a, 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 a trade adjacent thing. Mine, Alessa's already mentioned Westbrook, but I want to say the Lakers get rid of Westbrook, whether it's for Wall, whether it's for like literally anything else, because I'm just like all in on this chaotic Lakers train wreck of a season. And I don't know why, but I just have such, such, you know, and listeners will probably know this from everything I've ever said about the Lakers in the last six months, but I just have so much schadenfreude for this team and this organization this season, and I want to see them fail. So... Watching them talk themselves into, so aggressively talk themselves into Westbrook has been absolutely charming. And then now, <laughs> now for the reporting to be um, that they no longer believe that they can win with him uh, and that they don't see standing pat as a viable option, both quotes, that really just puts the cherry on top of the shade and Freud cake. So uh, that's, that's where I'm looking. Yeah, um, I... Even on top of that, if they don't trade him, I hope they, I hope they squeak into the eighth seed, and then I hope you fucking wipe the floor with them. Oh, like I will. hope, I hope Phoenix just pummels them into the ground again. I hope, yeah, yeah. <laughs> again. I hope they they face off uh, Marco's beautiful New Orleans Pelicans in the play-in because mm. I just think that would be a great shot. That's where their season ends up in the fucking play-in against the Pelicans. Mm. That's where you are. It'd be such a reality <laughs> check that. Everyone else knew about, except for you, and then fucking made your bed. I'm so happy they suck. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking good. All right, what's your trade? I don't have a trade. I had a, um, just a little bit of theory um, regarding Brad. What's up? Oh, Sean, what is your trade? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Michael Green and a lottery up. protected 2027 first round pick for Terrence Ross. Yeah. That's now that's yeah. boring. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I actually like it. <laughs> I mean, now yeah, what, what's the theory? Did you not have a trade? Oh yeah, you, you had a couple. Of. Um, I like all the I like all the big name trades. I like or I like the idea of Wall Westbrook two, um, Wall Westbrook the sequel. I like the idea of Harden Simmons, but uh, I, I had an article get published on this website on Sunday about uh, Bradley Beal and how I think we should trade him now. He has since. Had a timely surgery. <laughs> um, but just something I wanted to say was I I love Tommy Shepard and looking at the last few years in um, you know, in, in whole, I'm not afraid of what he's gonna do moving forward. Cause I was afraid that he was um gonna make a really bad move centered around what Beale thinks should happen. But I, I reckon, I reckon Tommy Shepard is playing some six D chess, saying we're 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 talking to Beal on uh, all of our moves, trying to like be like, oh, he's fully untradeable, unless you know. But he well, he didn't hesitate to trade Wall, who the whole city was behind. He didn't hesitate to trade Westbrook, who was our best player last year. I don't think I don't think I think I think that he might um he might trade Bradley Beal. Um, I think he showed that he doesn't mind trading our best player. Uh, you know, the most expensive player, the player who everything goes through. And I hope that it's not a wizard's trade that happens before the deadline if it doesn't include Bradley Beal, but I, I don't think it will be. And I, I, I'm actually a bit a bit more hopeful. I, I dipped a bit after our good start to the season and we had a lot of bullshit. And now I'm a bit I'm a bit more hopeful again. But there was there was a rough twenty games there. And that's one thing we've got to mention at the start of the podcast, but check out the deep2.com. Yes, it's that symbol because the most recent article since we last spoke was an article by that Lucas Petridis who was just in your ear holes. Um, and it is a beautiful, a beautiful change of pace from where he started at the start of the year writing something something like, uh, you know, are the, are the Washington Wizards finally turning it around at the start of the year? I think it was like get move move the banners, make space for the next banner. <laughs> lines of that. Uh, and then a lot happened between now and the trade deadline. Uh, then in the trade deadline, and it's uh, it's quite it's quite fun to read your your change in perspective. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> That's sure. real Shadenfreude. 
<clears throat> no, 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 no. Seems like you're taking pleasure in your friends. No, I think you did a good job at experience. It's called it. growth, Dante. <laughs> Survival of the fittest, the natural order of things. <laughs> um, who wants to send us off? I'll, I'll send us off. Uh, thanks for listening. It's been a trade deadline special that will almost certainly be obsolete by the time you listen to it. But I hope you've enjoyed it anyway. Uh, and yeah, Luca's article is up now on the deep2.com. You can find that at the aforementioned URL. Otherwise, you can hit us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, probably some other places. YouTube will be there. Um, thanks for listening. Boys, thanks for joining me. The depth, the the deep, the ugh, the deep two. God, that's a mouthful. Anyways, I'm Marco, co-host of the. Hey, Daniel Gafford, what's the name of our podcast? The JVG NBA Tribute Show. Wow, I can't believe it's that easy. Thanks, Gaff. You probably know us as two members of the Four Man Weave plus Marco, but we know you as our next listener. Well said, Lucas. I got to ask, how do we differ from the pack of basketball podcasts? It's a great question, Marco. You see, on our basketball podcast, we have two male co-hosts. Wow, truly groundbreaking. After this episode, stay on your favorite podcasting app and give us a spin. We were over the moon when we first heard that the NBA was going to be televised on Australian free-to-air TV in the 2019-20 season. It didn't exactly go swimmingly with the nasty cough halting the season and games getting cancelled left, right and centre, but it was a huge step and an exciting one for basketball fans all across the country. Better yet, it wasn't a commercial channel cashing in on some basketball nerds like us. It was SBS, one of our public broadcasters. Unfortunately, the NBA wasn't the only thing SBS was pushing last season. They also ran advertisements from Sportsbet, Ladbroke, Bet365, Bet Easy, and Neds, some of the biggest sports betting companies in Australia. In a one step forwards, two steps backwards move, SBS has dropped the ball here. As a public broadcaster, SBS plays a key role in providing relevant, culturally appropriate health information to local communities. The last thing SBS should be doing is offering a platform for gambling companies during the most financially unstable time in recent memory. This past year, men aged 18 to 24 made up 79% of new gambling account holders with increased median spending and frequency of bets. This is the last thing we should be spending our money on given the financial uncertainty that comes with the pandemic. During COVID lockdowns, wagering companies spent more money on advertising and incentives to gamble, and it worked. SBS needs to hear from viewers that gambling ad revenue isn't worth the harm it causes. Call on the SBS chair, George Savitas, to put community health ahead of gambling revenue by signing the petition at www.endgamblingads.org.au forward slash get gambling off SBS with hyphens in between.